Hey guys, welcome back to another Try Not to Cut Yourself video. I'm Tyler, and uh, I'm back in Ottawa, back in my wonderful base or basement apartment here. Uh, and man, it's cold in Ottawa. Uh, in my last video, I was out in the woods uh, talking about what to do if you cut yourself out in the middle of nowhere, or uh, well, you know, out in the bush somewhere and you don't have a first aid kit. Um, today I'm going to be talking about how to uh, band yourself up if you do have a first aid kit, um, so you know, like an indoor situation, um, and you know what steps you're going to take uh, in terms of determining whether or not you're going to the hospital, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. I'm gonna change camera angles, and we're gonna we're gonna get into the whole. Don't cut yourself. All right, so we have our uh, first aid kit here, and for a second, I just want to highlight the importance of having a first aid kit around in your home. Um, it's it's integral, really. It is. <coughs> Sorry. Having one of these is very much so the difference between, um, you know, going. F it's a difference. I don't want to say life and death because life and death is very scary and it's very serious. But honestly, having something like this is the difference between you know, having your roommate call the ambulance for you or having yourself do it, right? Having your cleaning lady find you on Wednesday, passed out in a corner or, you know, making it to the hospital on time kind of thing. It's, it's very important to have a first aid kit um, and they're cheap. I think I got this one from Costco for, you know, like 20 to 25 bucks kind of thing. Um, and it's, it's great. So let's, you know, make up a scenario here for a second. The most common place I get cut on the hand is my index finger. Um, you can see this probably this is probably the worst one. Uh, there's a scar right there. I got a couple nicks on this side from some knives. There's a scar there that you probably can't see because it's very faint. Um, but I'm an expert on this appendage specifically here. And uh, actually, that's another good thing to mention before we get into this. Um, I've I'm a lifeguard. I've been certified for three years. I've been working as a lifeguard for two years. Um, I'm certified in advanced CPR, advanced first aid, all that good stuff. And I've, I've, like I said, I've worked as a lifeguard for two years now. I know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, I'm not an expert in any means. I'm not, you know, an EMT. I'm not a doctor. But in terms of first responders, I'm, you know, as well versed as they come. Um, so let's say, for instance, you know, I'm noodling with my knife here. Boker Grip Lock. Very nice knife. I'll do a review on it uh, at a later date. But let's say I'm noodling and I'm cutting something. And, oh, darn it, I accidentally cut my index finger. Um, and I brought along my handy-dandy red marker just to be more dramatic. Oh God, I cut my finger. So I went and got my first aid kit here. We're gonna open it up. And my first aid kit is made so that there's different sections. Um, you know, there's a section for like burn trauma, there's a section for like cut trauma, there's a section for sprains and things like that. Um, so the first thing I would consider is how bad is this cut? Um, is this the kind of cut that I'm gonna wrap up in a towel and like immediately call 911 because I need to get to the hospital? Or is this kind of cut that I'm gonna clean up myself and just bandage and it's not gonna be a big deal? Um, let's go with the latter and say it's not a big deal. I'm gonna bandage it up myself and you know, I'll get on with my life kind of thing. So I would go in, I would grab a sandy strip here. Uh, these are alcohol wipes. They're really painful when you put them on cuts, but it's something you have to have, especially if it's not, you know, like a life-threatening injury. Um, so, you know, you open it up and you're just going to wipe off the infected area. Um, this isn't so big of a deal, but that's going to remove the marker I just put on there. But anyways, so you're going to wipe up the affected area just to make sure it's sterile. Then you're going to take your gauze bandage or regular bandage, depending on how bad the cut is. Now, in terms of gauze, there are a few options you have. Um, you have regular gauze bandage, kind of like that. Um, you can go with a... Let's see, there's like a compression kind of bandage, uh, or they call it a woven sponge. Um, this one's really good if, uh, you know, you have you have like a cut that's not so bad that you're just gonna wrap it in like a, a tourniquet and go to the hospital, but it's also, it's bad enough that you're gonna need stitches, but not bad enough that it's, you know, life-threatening kind of thing. Um, these are great for that because you can, you can place it on, you can use a bit of tape, and it's very, uh, it's very clean. It's a sterile bandage, um, and doctors like it because it's easy for them. They just cut the tape, and you know they proceed with uh, with whatever stitches they need to do. Um, let me see if I have another example. I have bigger ones too. There's, um, let's see here. 
There's bigger pads, um, you know, so if it's like a, a really big uh, cut or burn, these are also very good for burns. Um, burns are kind of tricky though because, you know, stuff's going to stick to your skin. So be careful with burns. This isn't necessarily about that. Um, more so for cuts. Let's see, what else do I have in here? I thought I had other other gauze and bandages, but I think this is, this, this will be the best stuff. Oh, I have, yeah, okay. So I have other stuff in here that's a lot bigger. But like I said, um, you know, if it's just kind of like a minor cut, um, these little sterile pads are really good. And uh, this kind of gauze is, is fantastic as well, because this is very, very absorbent. Um, I think for this demonstration, I'm gonna use these, because these are just easy to throw away. So you're gonna wanna open this up. If you don't wanna move your finger at all, like, because I remember when I cut my finger here, it was very, very painful. And I didn't even really wanna move my finger at all, because it was painful. Um, so, you know, I use my middle finger. Um, you could also use scissors. Most first aid kits come with scissors. This one does, it's in the back. I'm not gonna go through there. Um, you know, or use the knife that you just cut yourself with. <laughs> you could do that too. Um, so take out your, your bandage. And like I said, this is sterile. Um, this one comes with like two little ones, which is great. I would say wrap one uh, on top. And now here's the here's the kicker, right? Because this is, comes in a little package, you're probably going to use the, all of it all at once. Uh, you might not need to, but you know, you probably are. You could wrap it underneath to kind of get like a 360 thing going here, but in reality, you're best just to put it on top. Um, kind of, you know, I kind of did it one uh, offset to the other so I get a bit more distribution. Um, now, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get some medical tape. I have a few different types of medical tape. I have this really nice, uh, thick uh, medical tape here that I really like. And uh, this, this is actually the medical tape that came with the first aid kit. It's thinner, it's more like hockey tape kind of thing. Um, it's still really good. I just, I prefer the big stuff. Um, so the next thing you're gonna do, like I said, is take your tape. And this is where the difference comes in between being pretty and being effective. So I like to give it a couple good tight wraps um, just to make sure that it's on there, it's not going anywhere. Um, and you know, take your scissors here. You could also use the knife that you just cut yourself with, but just for shiggles, let's use the scissors. And then on the other side as well, you're gonna tighten it up with the, with the tape, sorry. And so again, we lost a bit of, uh, of coverage here at the bottom. Um, it's, you know, it's the difference between prettiness and effectiveness. Uh, at the end of the day, you're better to be effective than pretty, um, you know. So it's better that women find you handy than find you handsome. It's red green always says. Um, if you get into the situation where, you know, like here, it's kind of loose in here. Now the cut is being, uh, there is direct pressure on the cut. Um, but you know, like I said, it, we kind of lost a bit of tension here just from the way the tape was. If you want, um, throw another piece of tape just kind of gently around the cut itself. A lot less pressure than is on the, uh, the, the sides of the bandage here. The sides of the bandage are more so just to, to keep that in place. Um, but the middle is to keep direct pressure of the bandage on the cut. Um, so you know, not, not the prettiest bandage job ever, but it'll be effective. And especially if it's just a, a minor cut that you don't need to go to the hospital, it doesn't need to look pretty anyways. Um, so the important thing to remember when uh, bandaging yourself up like this is uh, the acronym RED. It stands for Rest, Elevate, and Direct Pressure. And it's easy to remember because RED is like blood. And you can kind of see maybe that this, this finger, it's kind of tight along here, I, especially this one's really tight. It's kind of uh, blocking blood flow to this finger, um, which, is not the best thing in the world. It's also not the worst thing in the world. Um, when you're dealing with a cut, especially, you kind of want to block blood flow, um, at least just for a little bit, so that it can uh, it can uh, not congeal, but it'll uh, it'll start to heal over, start to scab, that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, that's not the end of the world if you do it tight. I like to do it tight. That's my you know personal preference, but whatever. Um, so back to the acronym RED. Um, rest means you know take it easy. If you're the kind of person that gets really amped up when you you know cut yourself or when something happens to you, um, just take it easy. Take some deep breaths, calm down. You know, do things uh, 
you know, get do things to help you get back to your normal heart rate. Um, the next uh, letter in the acronym is E for elevate. Um, so blood blood flow is helped by gravity. So if you keep your your hand or wherever your cut is above your heart, it's going to be a lot harder for your heart to pump blood to that. Uh, you know, you you'll probably know this if you uh, sleep with your arm ab- like under your head, kind of thing. You'll wake up in the morning, your arm's probably you know sore or a little fuzzy. Um, it's just because it's harder for for blood to get there. Or you know, stand for 45 seconds with your arm above your heart. Your hand's gonna start to feel weird, that kind of thing. Um, so elevate, try to keep it up, so it'll be harder for blood to f- blood flow to happen. Um, and the last letter is D, is uh, direct pressure. Um, I'm kind of using the bandage to my advantage here to apply direct pressure. Um, if you if you want, you can hold it, whatever. Like I said, I, I'm kind of using the tape and the bandage here to my advantage for that. Um, it, if, it will hurt if you cut yourself pretty bad. It will hurt to put direct pressure on, but do it anyways because it's very important. It will help the, uh, the cut to heal over. Um, you know, it's, it sounds really dumb, but even just by holding it together like that, you're, you're pushing the two skin flaps together that you just cut apart, and it will help stop the blood flow. Honestly, it will. So keep rest, keep your heart rate down. Um, you know, just try to be calm, be, uh, you know, be yourself. Um, elevate, keep it up just because gravity, gravity is our friend and, uh, and keep direct pressure on it. And, you know, if it's, if it's a non life threatening cut, um, you'll be fine. Give it a couple days and it'll start to heal and, uh, you know, try not to reopen the cut. I've done that before I've reopened cuts after a couple days and it's not fun. Um, if it's a life threatening cut, you have to, again, you have to assess the, the severity of the cut. So you know, if I'm in a situation where I cut, you know, if I, if I was to say, take my Boker grip lock, for instance, and cut like an inch across my hand and like, you know, a quarter of an inch into my hand, like, I don't know what I was doing. Maybe I slipped and I just gouged out a huge part of my hand and I can see veins and I can see tendons and ligaments. You know, if I was to do that, then fuck getting my my uh, first aid kit out i'm grabbing a t-shirt out of the laundry or i'm grabbing you know microfiber cloth or something that's really close to me and i'm wrapping that bitch up and i'm going to the hospital right now because it, you're it's better if you get to the hospital sooner versus um you trying to you know do this to yourself it's just going to take time um if you do cut yourself really bad and you're prone to passing out like i am um, call 911 like immediately after. Call them and tell them what happened, give them your address, um, tell them how to get to your house, like how to get into your house rather, um, and, uh, and then go at, you know, like wrapping it up, um, just using a tourniquet. Um, because like I said, the sooner someone gets to you that is very professionally trained, like an EMT or, you know, a doctor, the better. Um, so, you know, less time filling with first aid kits and more time grabbing t-shirts and wrapping or, um, you know, uh, like I said, microfiber cloths or whatever and wrapping your hand up, um, because that will help to stop the blood as well. It's just a lot less permanent. This is a a little more permanent in terms of, you know, I can have this on for, for the rest of the day or, you know, a day and a half until I shower next kind of thing. Um, and it'll be, it'll be fine. Um, so, you know, you have to kind of make those assessments, um, as you go. And uh, in terms of uh, tourniquet, like I said, uh, t-shirt works really well, wrapped around direct pressure. Uh, microfiber cloth, if it's big enough, I have a really big one. Uh, you know, maybe a couple pairs of socks, some underwear, whatever you got lying around. Uh, dish cloth. Um, so, you know, if you want more specific uh, information on tourniquets, watch my last video. I talk about it a bit more. But in terms of uh, what you know, what to do if you cut yourself and you have a first aid kit lying around, um, that's about it for this video. There's one more thing I wanted to talk about, though. Um, I have this awesome stuff. It's called uh, Stara Strip. Is that what it's called? Yeah, uh, Stara Strip. And it's like stitch tape, and it's fantastic. And hopefully I'm in frame here. I don't know where I set the camera. Um, it's fantastic. It's like tape, but it simulates human flesh. Um, and it's, it's really great. And I've cut myself really bad and then just, you know, put this on 
and uh, and it, it's done wonders. It saved me from getting from getting stitches a couple times. Um, if you can get this, uh, get it. Maybe I don't even know if it's available at um, at drugstores. Um, I got it from a uh, first aid retailer um, where I was working before as a lifeguard. Uh, the first aid the first aid retailer came in one day and said, "Hey." We have uh, we have a bunch of products that we, we want you to try out, and one of them was uh, was these stitch tapes, uh, and they're fantastic. And I'm almost out, and so um, yeah. So if you can find that, do that. Like I said, that's more so for cuts that are not the you know they're not the biggest of deals. They're not the end of the world. You're not going to die. Um, but yeah, so this has been you know what to do if you cut yourself and you have a first aid kit. Um, if you want to know what to do if you cut yourself uh, without a first aid kit, watch my previous video. Um, it's called Outdoor First Aid or something like that. Um, and it's very informative as well. Um, and look forward to my review on the Boker Grip Lock. So yeah, uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.